Hi, and welcome to the Anime Host Club. My name is Jeff, and I'll be your host today. On episode one, we'll be discussing how we got into anime fandom, and we will cover this season's breakout hit, Keep Your Hands Off Azuken. Please enjoy your stay at the Anime Host Club. Uh, <laughs> podcast audience, I am Dan. <laughs> This is our first ever podcast. This is my first ever podcast. Uh, it's new uncharted territory for me. Uh, we are starting this podcast because all we do as a group is sit around talking about anime. And eventually we decided that maybe it would be kind of interesting to put our discussions up on the internet and see if other people wanted to chime in and share their opinions and recommendations and whatever with us. And, uh, yeah, then we can all talk about anime together, which is really all that I ever wanted to talk about with people. You know, I, you know, the other half of my life is doing my little record label and, and punk stuff and booking tours and, and my, my mail order. But I don't like talking about records with people because my, I have such like hard line opinions about punk and such like strict opinions about punk that I like am so set in my ways and it's impossible for me to enjoy anything because I'm so overly critical of everything. But with anime, I don't feel that way. I feel like I love talking about it and learning more about it and, and I'm not so jaded and cynical about it. So there's still a lot of, energy to to propel forward um my own history with anime you know the early like the earliest memories of my life are include anime you know when i think of the three earliest memories i have of my entire life when i you know was born in atlanta georgia i remember going to krispy kremes with my dad i remember taking the cable car up stone mountain and I remember watching Macross on TV, which would have been Robotech. And I didn't even know I was watching Macross until I was an adult and watched Macross. And then just certain scenes and screenshots was like, just hit me like a bolt of lightning. I was like, oh my good God. Like, I remember watching this when I was, was you know, fucking practically an infant, you know, like was the earliest memories of my life sitting in front of my TV watching this stuff. And I, I kind of dibble dabbled uh, you know, I, in elementary school, I would wake up at six in the morning to just watch cartoons until noon, and watch Dragon Ball Z. I had to get up at six because Techno Man would play at six. Um, the like, yeah, the like also ran generic giant robot show that I'm weirdly attached to because of my childhood experiences. Um, yeah, middle school and high school, you know, I was rent like everybody else. I would rent you know, Ninja Scroll and, and, uh, whatnot from Blockbuster, uh, rented voices from a distant star from Blockbuster around that time. And by the time I went to college, that's when I really kind of shifted gears. I, I went from spending four or five hours a day in high school, just sitting by myself, listening to punk records, kind of shifted gears in college to spending four or five hours a day, sitting by myself, watching anime. And, spent all of college yeah watching and sitting around by myself watching anime a lot of grad school like that and all the way up to my adult life where i currently spend yeah an hour two hours three hours a day almost every day just sitting by myself watching anime uh and yeah i never really have anybody to talk about it with other than you know our our friend group so it's real nice to uh have a nice weekly conversation about it well, you want to go next, Amelia? No, you go next, Jeffrey. Okay. <laughs> How do we meet? We um. Well, Dan, I the... met you and Steven yeah. in in college, and you guys were watching anime in anime club, and I was watching Steven in anime club. Aha! <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> it all makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, my, my name is Jeff, and yeah, we um, we've been talking about this for probably a year now. Um, after listening to AWO's podcast, because I'm a fanboy of their, uh, you know, of their podcast, and I've been seeing um, 
been seeing anime's craziest deaths for like the last six years and i finally put the two and two together uh last year before otakon and i was like well if they can do it we can do it just like punk right yes you go to a show and you're like well I, why am i not on stage doing this i'm gonna make a punk band um which reminds me, I sent uh, Dan this <laughs> this crass logo that was merged with the Trigun cross. It was pretty cool. <laughs> 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 I think we got to get that shirt. Yeah, I started watching anime pretty young. Um, I remember my aunt uh, playing Akira on cable and not really fully understanding what it was. But, you know, we'd watch that. We'd watch Godzilla. Um, so that Godzilla was a big part of the experience for me. Um, mm. Japanese film and animation. But yeah, and of course, you know, I was on that bandwagon with Toonami, Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, and I'm in the same boat there. I also remember being in college, and it's like, yo, it's Saturday night. I got to be back to my room by midnight so I could watch the anime block coming on, you know, like I know, I know this band is playing at like 1130, but I might have to miss them because I need to see the next episode of America seven. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, what Sailor Moon was on there. The early days, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon. And, uh, what was the Samurai? Samurai Troopers, right? was on there. Never. Well, why the fuck not? <laughs> I didn't start liking anime until much, much later in my life. I feel oh. like I started late. I'm always a late bloomer with, like, anything. Like, I'm just, like, everyone had been doing it for, like, five years, and I'm just like, oh, wait, what's this thing? It's called anime? Cool. <laughs> well, in college, we, um, like, the first few days that we were there, um, I remember you coming over, maybe it was, like, within a week or two, but... It's not important. Um, I remember having City Hunter playing on my computer. And, like, you walked in. Some other people walked in. I was so focused on the anime, the City Hunter. I didn't care about socializing. I was still <laughs> I was still a hardcore otaku. Right? <laughs> yeah, I, you're probably the first <laughs> hardcore otaku that I ever met. And I was like, yeah. oh, my God, I'm going to be just like him when I grow up. <laughs> you spawned I, my anime figure collection, Jeffrey. But then I fell off of it. Thank you, Amelia. Yeah, you had. Um, I don't know who, what the question. character was, but you had a. Um, I think she was kneeling, um, with her hands in her like in her lap, touching her vagina, and her oh. boots were almost out. But I think it's probably a bathing suit, some kind of anime figure. In your yeah, room. yeah. It was I, and I was like, oh my god, that's cute. That's cute. And I'm going to need to collect all of them. Yeah, that was like a one-off thing. I don't. I got that um, in high school. Uh, Steve's friend gave it to me, randomly. I don't know what show it's from, if it's from a show or not. Just a random figure. Um, but then I fell off probably in 2010, 11. After college. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was like... I feel like that's opposite of me. I, mean, I feel like I've told the story before, but I've I felt a need to just rid myself of all material things, quote unquote. Um, and I, was, I was like, no more video games, no more anime, uh, conspiracy theories. Yeah, I kind of went to a weird place then. Um, mm. But then started watching stuff right around when Kill a Kill came out. Uh, I remember that being sort of like, oh, I got to start watching anime again. Mm. Uh, and I made this uh, Tumblr bubblegum crash. It's still up. I just checked it. Uh, <laughs> Maybe they deleted it. it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Shouts out. I'm 2 a.m. waifu on Tumblr. Uh, that's right. Yeah. I was kind of wondering when you were going to figure out that it was me. I haven't I been think. on in a while. Yeah. I mean, I haven't been on in a while either, but... <laughs> Yeah, well, it's sort of the impetus to uh, to start watching things again. Um, so instead of reviewing things, I was just making gifts of classic shows. I yeah. feel like making gifts of of shows is almost like paying homage to that specific moment in time that mm -hmm. like means so much to mm -hmm. you when you're watching that you can like give to somebody else. 
Sorry, got real deep there for a second. Ooh, flip. Oh, little Tumblr gifts. Oh man. But I, I will see uh, some gifts that I make. Like very, I'm scroll, I'm on um, Giphy, and uh, I'm like looking for a gift to use. I'm like, I swear I made this gift. <laughs> unless someone, uh, unless someone, there's a small chance that someone else chose the exact same frames, uh, three seconds or however long it was of frames, and it looks exactly the same. That's really cool. Yeah, I'll have to, uh, I'll have to link people to that. Matter of fact, if uh, if I start posting on there again. Um, I will link this podcast because uh, I've got I got quite a m- number of followers. Um, yeah, well, we're Mr. Popular over here. Oh, you missed the Mr. Popular ensemble. Oh, oh, can I say I, I got a lot of followers? What, what can I say? <laughs> Hell yeah! When did you start getting actually back into anime for real? Like, like this is the moment. Maybe not the kill a kill moment. What? 2016, maybe. Yeah, because. We started going to Otakon like regularly in like 2014. I yeah. feel like, but I don't think you came for a couple of them. Yeah, I started. Well, I started. I did like I said before, and I was doing the when I was doing the blog. I was downloading um, OVAs from the 80s and 90s, and that was sort of um, it was like backtracking. I didn't care what was out um, at the moment. I just wanted to scrape the bottom of the barrel from that. From that decade, specifically the '80s, but yeah, when we started going to Oticon again, like yes, I still like this medium. I believe it or not. Um, so, like, what's your favorite genre? Mm, what's like the genre that like gets you every time? You're like, oh man, this might be trash, but it's just heaven on my eyes. For me, there's like five basic things that I like that I'm always looking for: giant robots. Good love stories, the apocalypse, uh, samurai and ninjas, and fighting spirit. And if it's got some combination of these five things, then for sure that's that's going to be on my radar and something that I'm I'm keen on. And I that really that really was emphasized to me when I was watching Kuroko's basketball, uh, and I think we talked about this like as I was watching it. Uh, because I, as I went through that show, I, I came to the conclusion, despite what Anime World Order seems to think, I was like, well, actually, this show is not very good, is it? But basically, I don't care because there's still people yelling at each other about how they're never going to be defeated and their fighting spirit is, you know, just, you know, out of control and, and they're the they're the toughest out. And really, the, that's all I want is just people yelling at each other about their fighting spirit. You know, maybe throw in a giant robot, maybe throw in a love story, but it's all about the fighting spirit, man. Oh, yeah. What about you, Jeffrey? Um, definitely a sci-fi guy. Um, Gundam is my favorite probably anime franchise. Um, and Dan, thankfully, has jumped on that recently, right? Um, yes. That is my goal for 2020 is to make my way to <laughs> the entire Gundam franchise. <laughs> There's a lot to go through. Sort of a soft spot for the, the classic stuff. So if it's if it's made its way into the new stuff, then I'm good to go. I'm not uh, not a huge fan of uh, Moe, as you know, um, Moe shows and high school shows, unless it's Gum Swish. Yo, Beach, that's my genre. Yeah, yeah, I can make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can make some. Uh, I feel like you also like, um, I mean, I don't know why anyone wouldn't, but I feel like um, you also like to go to the movies to see, like, anime movies that are, like, airing now, that are, like, in theaters now. I feel like, yeah. you know, you're the person that, like, we go to the movies with specifically, like, to watch new anime, like, movies that are coming out. Yeah, I feel like it needs, and I think a lot of the films have, they're able to um, captivate you in a, in a different way. Um and maybe a little bit more universal. I think uh, I think that's important. And like you know, if once it's done, you got to be able to walk away and be like, "Hey, like man, I, I want to think about this for two or three days," and sure. it sticks with, sticks with you. So that's me. All right, Amelia. Oh me. Um. <laughs> okay. What's up, everyone? Um, my name is Amelia. Um, 
I do a YouTube thing, um, and my name on YouTube is Moe Soda. My name on everything is Moe Soda, unless you're on Tumblr, and then I'm 2AM Waifu. Um, I started watching anime, like, obviously, like, most people who grew up in the 90s, like, you know, Pokemon, Sailor Moon, like, without knowing that it was anime. Um, you know, I really loved Power Rangers, which is an anime, but I feel like definitely leads itself to the anime genre. Um, but, um, so, where do I, where do I begin? And so I had this friend group, um, shortly after high school. We all got together all the time, and, um, for some reason, you know, normally we would just go to shows, like hardcore shows, or, you know, we would hang out and, you know, play video games or something like that. But for some reason, one day we decided that we were going to watch anime, and my friend Steve put on this anime called Naruto. And so it began my anime journey. Um, Naruto, like, really just, like, captivated me, and I knew about anime. It has always been in the back of my mind, but for some reason, that specific anime at that specific point in my life was like, um... Yes, you need to watch all of this right now. It does not matter what you are doing with your life. You need to stop and watch it all. And, like, at that point in time, anime didn't come over regularly like it does now. So the way we would watch it is it would air in Japan. A fan sub company, like, group of people would fan sub it and put it up on the internet for you to tour in. And we would tour in the newest episode and we would watch it all. We would get together, watch Naruto every week until like, um, until I just like couldn't take it anymore. And I had to catch up with like the newest episode as soon as it came out. And um, at the time I had like, I was working at Applebee's and um, I called out of work for three days and I literally sat on my computer and I would download one episode, wait for it to finish downloading download another one, watch the episode that just finished downloading while the newest episode oh, yeah. was still downloading so I oh, could watch yeah. it seamlessly. I did that for yeah. three days straight. And, you know, That's I didn't get stuff. fired or anything, um, but my my anime watching skills were strong even, even in my early days. But um, after that, you know, life had to move on because college happened. Um, you know, me and Jeff both went to the same college and there was lots of homework all the time. Like I don't, I couldn't even function going to my one, my one shift a week at the job I had, <laughs> like trying to, trying to watch anime at the same time. Like basically the only time we, I ever watched anime in college was like, if we were at anime club and I would have to make it a point like, okay, I need to, I need to go take a break and like go to anime club and sit and watch something, you know, life just happens sometimes. But, um, then, so I fell off for a little bit. I don't, I don't know. There's just like a lot, I feel like that goes on at that point in your life where some, sometimes, you know, you can, it, anime helps. And then sometimes you just have to take a break, you know, you, you learn what animes help you in certain situations. So I think it was probably, I had won a trip off of Facebook to go to Japan. And I went to Japan for a week and did a homestay program. And um, I didn't know any animes that were uh, being advertised. So when I came back, I was like, okay, like, it's time for anime. So then I started watching anime more, you know, going to Otakon every year, just getting into like, I mean, really what sparked it was, like, we went to Otakon, because I was like, why don't we go to Otakon? It's, like, literally right down the street. This is stupid. Um, why don't we go? So we went, and then, like, literally I didn't know anything. I'm just, like, walking around. Everyone is cosplaying all these characters and, like, all of these, you know, it, I barely knew anything. So I was just like, let me, let me catch up. I need to play five years of catch up in the anime game before we go to another convention. So I sat and watched mm. every new anime that was coming out. No Game, No Life, Oremo. Like, if it was out at that, uh, in 2014, I was watching it alone yeah. in my room. <laughs> yeah, like 100, 100 years to catch up. Yeah, for stuff. real. I would go on forum sites and be like, what kind of anime is like this anime? And then I would download it, and sometimes it would be that anime, and sometimes it wouldn't be that anime. 
Um, you know, sometimes it's not what it says it is, but, um, yeah, so now we go to conventions all the time. Um, I talk about anime and merchandise. Mostly I really like anime figures. I like collecting anime figures and anime merch. So I talk about that a lot on my YouTube channel. Um, you know, the newest animes that are airing because we all need to catch up to that. There's so many all the time. I feel like I'm like wasting my time if I don't catch up because of how how long I've had to catch up for. So I like to keep on top of that. <laughs> you know? It's like it's well, like it's impossible I'm, though. It's there's just it there's is really impossible. there's just so it, much media. It is. Yeah. It is, but that is that is usually what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Catching I, up. I've been exactly the opposite insofar as I think currently running My Hero Academia is the only show that I have ever watched kind of as it's running week to week. Otherwise, I'm always watching a completely random smorgasbord of old shows and past season shows and something that just finished up. And um, I guess I guess Isoken is technically still running, but I'm only on like episode six or something or episode seven. So uh, hopefully it'll be done by the time I finish it up. But yeah, I never felt much pressure, or rather, I guess I felt the impossibility of trying to keep up with things as they're running. And I just don't, I don't like the one week wait, you know, mm. the episode. I like to watch things at my own pace and at, at my own convenience. So I'm much more yeah. happy to watch something that's already finished. I get that. Because some there like sometimes I do like wait, I'll wait like three weeks to, to finish watching it until it's caught up. You know, like I get not not wanting to come back every week, but then. Um, well, actually, I take it back. I guess Vinland Saga was the first one that I watched uh, week to week as it was running. Are you watching Demon Slayer? I still haven't seen Demon Slayer. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta watch it. I gotta watch it. I know. I get down and watch it. Look, I'm I'm too busy. What you know? I gotta watch all these Gundam OVAs from here. <laughs> That's, I guess that's that that's my motivation I feel like to watch new animes because like yeah I mean I get the, this podcast is obviously like a great way to bring up older anime and make it more relevant but I feel like as soon as an anime is done airing it's now not relevant um and I like to talk about anime all the time and if like I if nobody's seen the old ass anime that I'm like watching and I can't like get feedback or like discussion on it. You know, it kind of yeah. like, it kind of like discourages me um, from not from watching it. Cause obviously I'm going to watch it no matter what, like if I want to watch something, I'm going to watch it, but you know, it's much easier to talk about the newer animes that are airing than it is to bring up some old ass show that nobody's heard of like cats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think there's there's kind of two interesting angles of discussion on that. One, you know, relating one that anime has transitioned to a a seasonal output. Like as things are simulcast and, and accessibility becomes so much easier in the U.S., our sense of digesting anime has shifted from the you know kind of the the sense of when when the three of us were younger that. You know, there's this this kind of random list of essential shows that you really got to watch if you're into this kind of stuff, and you just kind of randomly make your way through this random list. Like everybody's got to watch Cowboy Bebop, everybody's got to watch Trigun, everybody's got to watch Neon Genesis Evangelion, and you just kind of watch these things uh, as you go. And there's kind of a, a base assumption that if you're actually into this kind of stuff. Certainly, you've seen Neon Genesis Evangelion. That's a given. So that's something we can all talk about. And I, you know, I I see that change, and I think that that change has been thoroughly analyzed by every YouTube commentator out there. Uh, that anime has over time transitioned to, you know, a weekly sense of what is the latest show, what is the newest show, you know, what's happening this week, this season, you know, and and people being much more caught in the moment than looking at, at past works. And I, I think another interesting angle to this discussion is, is to kind of uh, intersect this with punk a little bit because punk is the same way. And that is the discussion that us record label people always have is that the shelf life of new releases continues to decrease and 
records become records lose their relevance so much quicker now than they ever had before and in a similar way to anime you know it's not that punk has somehow become seasonal but it's an issue of market crowding right like mm-hmm. there are now more releases you know the the quantity of of release you know different releases just continues to expand and expand and every single week there's you know a new hot record that you just got to hear you know every month there's you know the latest trendy band and then it transitions to the next trend two months later things just just continue to happen so quickly and the pace of culture continues to accelerate in ways that like when we were younger you know tragedy put out a new record when i was in high school and that was the talk of the town for the entirety of that i was in high school you know mm-hmm. um and yeah that's that's just not it's just not the same anymore anime suffers from market crowding as well and so far as the number of seasonal shows continues to increase you know when we were younger there might only be well actually i don't know the numbers off the top of my head but you know if there were seven like, shows airing yeah there's usually like or now well, there's one yeah 70 70 was the newest season there were seven wow that came out. yeah okay. so and yeah. all of half of them are shit you know what i mean like it's not it's not yeah. something that you everyone needs to watch the new like the at all of them all the time because there's a lot of bad uh, as well as good but yeah. uh, just the fact that that there is so much available now when there wasn't i feel dutiful in my quest to watch all of the new good anime <laughs> <laughs> right, I feel that. Okay. I feel like uh, as as we're living in this these times, we need to we need to watch more anime. <laughs> mm. Yeah, well, you figure it'll be at least two two or three like highlighted shows, right? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. I mean, how do you? I know that you guys might not watch like the most new anime, but like, are there shows that are newer that like you've you've grown you've grown to like? Well, I guess that kind of depends on how new. And so far as, like, I love Attack on Titan as much as the next guy. I love JoJo's Bizarre Adventure as much as the next guy. You know, I'm I'm not sure if these qualify as being new shows anymore. Mm. Um, Continuing. Really, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Demon Slayer is last year, right? Shit, yeah. It finished last year. Well, I guess it's not even finished yet because their manga is still being adapted. Okay, and there's a movie coming out. Is there a movie? Yeah, they're they're instead of doing I think a TV series, they're doing uh, a film instead. I hate that. <laughs> I quite literally hate that. Hmm. They did that with Made in Abyss too, and I'm pissed. Yeah, right. Well, you know, but I'm I'm curious to see how that's gonna play out because I'm I'm willing to believe that the next story arc could be a movie and and. Like, and I, I say this as somebody that, that I am also very skeptical of movie, movie adaptations of TV shows. I don't generally think that movies and TV are uh, interchangeable formats. But I do think that the next chunk of plot in Made in Abyss could come, that could fit in a movie, you know? If, if the movie was really long. I'm down for like a two and a half hour anime. The, yeah, the latest, yeah. the latest, the latest film is going to be. It is. It's covering the, the next part of the manga, where the TV series ended. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, where they go into the next layer and they fight Bon Drood, right? And I, I think most of that stuff could fit in a movie. Right, yeah. I'll, I'll pull up my Crunchyroll account and see uh, what what. What is the latest stuff that I've watched? That really- yeah, what is it? What is it? Because uh, I watch all I watch a lot of stuff. Yeah, well, Kaguya-sama, Love Is War. I definitely really enjoyed that. Uh, it's not really a ranking show for me, but I really liked it. Oh Maybe man! It's also, was like <coughs> not really a ranking show for me, but I, I got a lot out of it, and I'm anxious to see the next season. Although I don't, I don't really think it needs a next season. Like I don't know what a next season is. Uh, like I don't see where the story is gonna go from from there. Cells at work really hit hard for me. I, I got a lot out of that, and I'd be keen to see uh, the rest of the manga get adapted. Um, Have we established that I like trash? Because I feel like I haven't said that yet. Literal trash. Literal trash. <laughs> 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 My genres are trash, moe trash. And but, uh, 
apocalyptic trash. But that could be something to be said about those shows, you know, in that. I don't feel like they are trash. I feel like they are really good. <laughs> <laughs> but the general yeah. sense of trash. Now, do you like those shows for the writing? Is it the like, characters? What is it's, it? It's really like if it like I can I'm not very picky is the thing like I uh. can watch a show like even if like something I there's something I don't like about it I can still watch it or like if other people find something like repulsive about it like if it's a sh- if the I relate to the characters and I relate to the character designs like then yeah I can probably watch it if when shows like don't have good writing is like where I draw my line. Like if the writing is terrible, like absolutely not. But I also feel like um, I have a really like high standard of like liking a show or like my standards of anime are pretty high at the same time. Cause like, um, I mean, I really like Demon Slayer. I think it's, I think it's great all around. You know, the, the ones that I think are great, everyone usually thinks are great. But, you know, those shows are built on those old shows that you know, sometimes may be, people might be um, reluctant to watch. Mm-hmm. You know, they're all based, they're, they're, it, they're all taken from one another, right? They're mm-hmm. all tropes. And when you've watched and digested so much of what's already been out, it's hard to want to... Watch it again. Yeah. Like, well, what's, see, that's what's so thing, new like... about it? Sometimes, like, uh, like relating it to music, like, sometimes I just want the same album, but differently, over mm-hmm. and over again. Like, right. It's familiar. It's familiar. I really, you know, different words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't know if it's even familiar, and so, or as much as y- you know what you like, so, yeah. you know, right. like, I always like Fighting Spirit, whether it's in boxing, like Hajime no Ippo, or it's a giant robot like Tenjin Tapaguda and Lagan, you know, just just keep feeding me that that same, you know, I'm never giving up. I'm like, I too will never give up. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I need to hear, you know. Right. No, that's 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 a good point. And you know, like shows like Vinland Saga, like that to me, it's really good, but it makes me think of Berserk. And yeah, for its yeah. epic storytelling, you know, that, and the manga for sure is graphic and violent. Maybe that's the big difference too. Violence. Yeah. After well, yeah. After listening to an episode of AWO, it's like yes, those shows from the '90s and '80s were really violent and gory. They didn't have censorship. Honestly. Well, I think it's I think it's not even a censorship issue. I think it's a it's a sense of. Uh, what I think it's a sense of target audience, and I think it's a, a sense of what anime is supposed to be supposed to be selling to people. And also, yeah, when we think of brand new shows, I mean, Vinland Saga is number one for me. You know, actually, fuck every other show I just mentioned. <laughs> Vinland Saga is, yeah, like that shit really hit me hard. I, I thought that was just absolutely, uh, you yeah, know, I, I I didn't really. I only knew the the general premise of that franchise prior to the anime adaptation, but I, I thought the anime adaptation just knocked me the fuck out. I could not get enough of it. I went and read the next string of, of manga, um, mm-hmm. Barnes and Noble. Uh, it, it, yeah, really amazing stuff. And I didn't realize until recently it was done by the same guy that wrote Planetes, uh, which also is one of my very top ten favorite anime shows of all time. And that guy surely has a a great sense of the human condition. You, you know, he's a he's a, a great man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think I think you know from my perspective, my thought process has always been that that anime at that time, you know, when we think of like, oh, why are all the early '90s shows so over violent? Because that was the sense of, of target audience and market demand at that time. I think mm-hmm. people had were kind of selling anime short and assuming like, well, you know, people are watching anime to get things that they don't get from other mediums. So, you know, we got to we're we're running on style and running on what's cool and what's, you know, what's exciting to people. And that's going to be like giant monsters 
tearing people to shreds, their guts flying everywhere because that's not really seen in so much in live action stuff. And that's what, you know, that's what people are coming to anime for. So that's what we're going to give them. And, you know, this is adult cartoons. It's like the old manga, manga videos, um, advertisements. It's like, this ain't your parents cartoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I feel like, um, I feel like, or, like the, like older anime was like, the people that were the the way that you got that anime is if there was like a bootleg that you got or like you like knew a place that sold it that had imported it or you know it was a manga video anime corpse like whatever at release that you somehow got your hands on and if you were out buying stuff like that you had to be older it wasn't yeah. like you know a 14 year old's gonna go up to new york and find their bootleg yeah. Um, vendor, you know, because they're going to need their parents' permission or like they're going to need a parent to accompany them. So, people who digested anime, I feel like at that time were more of the older um, crowd. That's true. I agree. I, and I, I'm thankful that the, I don't know, from, from my perspective, the industry of anime has shifted over time, not necessarily to be more all ages, as you described, but to just stop putting this like kind of arbitrary sense of what is supposed to be appealing about anime and, and letting anime do as it will, you know, like I don't think stories like Vinland saga would necessarily have been, well, I mean, maybe Vinland saga is a bad example because it's got some kind of gory parts to it too. But is it, I know it's gory because I watched it and I thought it was great and I loved how much blood there was in it, but I feel like it could have been gorier. Yeah, that's you true. know. Yeah, I feel yeah. like they didn't take it far enough. It was an angel cop. Yeah, yeah it's no angel cop. Not cool. <laughs> no, oh my god. True. <laughs> like, <laughs> but maybe they paved the way for this to happen for the show to yeah be produ I, produced. I think now, now more than ever, it is possible to have successful shows and have you know kind of artistically great shows that run on you know kind of any premise under the sun like mushishi actually that's a better example you i don't think mushishi could have been as easily made you know in the early 90s you know with this arbitrary sense of like well anime really needs to be violent and exciting or it needs to be really over sexualized and and goofy to make it a comedy you know this this like quiet melancholic show about a guy wandering around solving people's vaguely supernatural problems in very like real practical ways you know like why would anybody be watching that you know like there ain't no blood and guts there ain't no sex there's no nothing to, to really sell this but it's like well what sells it is the the quality you know the the story the ambiance you know the, the character the merit of this in and of itself and it doesn't need any of this extra you know like um extra hype or, or any of this this extra circumstance to it you know what what hooks you is just the fact that it's a great story anyway mm -hmm. that doesn't need all the extra blood and guts to to be exciting and interesting um yeah that, that, that that's kind of why that uh you know i never watched devil man and i never uh, i've been meaning to go back and and rewatch um fist of the north star but a lot, a lot of those contemporaneous shows you know guyver and whatever i never watched any of that stuff even when i was younger just because of what i like are like good stories good characters and these the anime from that time is too reliant on over violence and and over sex and not you know there's not not anything to really sink your teeth into so you so you didn't go to blockbuster and rent Geno cyber and akira well i never went to blockbuster to rent, to rent anime i didn't even know blockbuster had anime until yeah people talk about renting anime from blockbuster <laughs> i feel like um i <laughs> I feel like I grew up in the wrong family. I feel like my parents didn't like anime, so they didn't never like tell me about it, and I'm just like bitter. Mm. <laughs> well, there's well, a small section. I could have been watching anime this whole my whole life. Well, I so 
I actually, I did see Geno Cyber, but only because Steven gave it to me on DVD, and then me and Amy watched it. And Geno Cyber is extremely entertaining, and like, I'm, as I've, it's not that I, I guess I've, I've made it sound like I dislike all this, this certain trope of anime. It's not necessarily that I dislike it, or maybe it is, but like, there is there is redeeming quality to it. Like I watched I watched Geno Cyber with, with my bandmate Danny, and you know there's a lot to be said for just the intrinsic entertainment of just like high energy action sequences with people blowing the fuck up and giant monsters to pull <laughs> up and shit. It's like damn, dude, yeah, I just saw that woman's intestines just like fly everywhere. That's fucking crazy, you know what? <laughs> you know, and we're we're you know eating chips and having a good time and and yelling at each other and shit. And it's fun, you know, but. Mm. Uh, that is not normally the context in which I watch anime. I'm normally sitting down and watching it by myself and really thinking about, you know, the great thematic lessons of what I just saw. I'm like, wow, what a beautiful, nuanced character relationship in Berserk. Or like, wow, that was a really poignant, you know, story, you know, moment about pacifism and Vinland Saga. Or, you know, Yang, you know, Admiral Yang is on screen, so I'm crying during Legends of the Galactic Heroes, you know? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I've seen I, literally none of those anime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's, yeah, I like I like stuff to sink your teeth into. And, mm -hmm. and yeah. I want to knock the, the, the yeah, over-violent shows because they are fun and in a different context, I would enjoy them a lot more. It's just not a context I often get a chance to, oh. to view them in. Mm. Yeah, I think a lot of that stuff is garbage, though. The ultra-violent stuff. It's like torture... Uh, uh, torture yeah. porn or like violent well, you know I, mean? it's... I feel like my views on that are a little bit different just because of <laughs> Steven. <laughs> like, that's all he watches. So, like, you kind of, like, I, got, I, got, I kind of get the art in it a lot of the yeah. times, but then I'll, I'll also, I have, like, conflicting views. Like, I get why it's here, why they've made it, it's artful, it's artistic, whatever, but then, like, the other part of me is like, man, but I just don't like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll have to, Not, we'll it could have to be a great story, but, like, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to guess, guess spot. Yeah, we'll just do a ultra-violent <laughs> uh, show review day. Yeah. That'd be good. I'm down with that. I don't know. Azo can. We can't have that. We can't have that. Take can't it. do it. <laughs> have you been watching? Have you been watching this show, Amelia? Yes, it's so good. It is really good. I, I love, love it so it. much. It's it's really different than the other uh, Yuasa works, huh? That's a big. It's a big departure from the rest of his catalog. <sighs> it's so good. Yeah, it's true. I don't know. It's I just I think it's just like my genre. Like I love like nerds doing nerd stuff, and like making an actual anime is something that I'm like super interested in. Not that I could like ever actually do it, but <laughs> I think it's really cool when someone can, and then they animate how they yeah. do that. <laughs> well, and that part of what I like about it is the way they flirt with reality throughout mm -hmm. that show the way they they and that's really like the power of anime in general right that you can bring things to life that uh may otherwise not be feasible and mm -hmm. Izo Kid kind of has their whole show based on that idea where they're like a bunch of anime people talking about making an anime and then their ideas spring into life in front of you know and among them you know or, around them and they're interacting with all their ideas as if they're real you know they're showing their their little um preview piece to the student council and everybody's got the like the you know when they have their character in the animation jumping off the plane then the whole audience has all the wind coming at them and and you know when the tank shoots a bullet and a big you know shell casing jumps out then it lands next to the audience and some kid from the audience is looking at it like oh my god i can't believe this is real <laughs> And that that inner immersing, that like whimsical interspersion of of real life and fantasy, I think is is very endearing, and it gives mm -hmm. the show a lot of, of emotional meat to it. I think and Flip Flappers was like that too. I thought it was very similar to Flip Flappers in that way. Mm -hmm. There's I Flip Flappers is more dramatic, but I think Isoken is more like uh, fun. You know, it's more carefree. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You haven't seen Flip Flappers. Is that a um, TV show? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's another short one. It's only like 13 episodes. Mm-hmm. Okay. I like to think that that's how everyone uh, is getting immersed into their anime while they're watching it. <laughs> the way that um, my problem is a lot of times I can't see what's happening because of all the tears in my eyes. So. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't a very nostalgic in a way, like wistful, you know, in that um, it, made me, it makes me think of why I got into anime in the first place, like that that magic that it creates. Uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you one scene that really stood out to me was the scene where they're showing their preview to the student council and the whole crowd is is just like, so blown away jaw dropped they're like wow like that was such a crazy experience they actually made that i can't believe that that we just witnessed such a thing and then the three of them are just sitting there like nitpicking it to shit and <laughs> <laughs> things like well you know the shadow to that explosion cloud really like you know it was missing from a frame and it really looked a little awkward and like yeah you know some of the stuff you just don't really see till you look at the final product you know we really gotta like change how the tank animates you know needs to move you know and and i felt like that's truly the mark of people that are dedicated to their craft because yes. I'm, i feel the same way when it comes to music and and records and whatnot when like you're never satisfied with anything you're just like always like anything you make you're never happy with it you're just always going berserk about all the littlest things yeah. and it's it's, uh, it's because the good examples of this stuff are so meaningful to you and you want your own works to measure up but in your own mind you know that's that's just never really possible the stuff that you create is just never going to be as good as your favorite stuff mhm mhm yeah. I definitely feel that way with art, dude. Like, yeah, <laughs> the constant well, struggle. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, being in, you took animation classes, right, Amelia? Yeah. At least one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I feel like well, having a project that you've dead, what a deadline. You know, you got six months or semester mm-hmm. to finish this one project, um, and piecing it together, like the whole that whole uh, process is relatable um but to do it outside of that environment where you have all the resources that's hard yeah you know um and maybe it's not hard i don't know maybe i'm just lazy but uh um the passion to do it is different uh once you're you're actually and when you're in that environment when you're in school when when Mm -hmm. there's things and people pushing you forward you know yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. just like, go ahead. Oh, you go ahead. Go ahead. No, it's just just to reiterate, and just and just the fact that um, not only resources but um, just free time, really, because think about all the the energy. What do they say? Like 40, 40 man hours a day, or not a day? Um, like a I'm trying to think how many hours. A drawing. They were saying. No, they were they Which were like discussing. They were discussing how long it would take to do like six minutes of animation or ten oh, minutes yeah, of animation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For was it, was um, forty at what was it? The a certain number of hours per day without sleep for the next two months or something. It was something like that. It was right. something ridiculous. Like you can't. There aren't even that many hours in a day, and you need to do that <laughs> nonstop without sleeping or resting for a forty hours in a day. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that leads to another thought that I've had watching the show is just how much I like the uh, the young woman with, with the toothy smile. I forget her name. Um, the tall one? Yeah, the tall one. The oh, boss. the uh, boss lady. Yeah, and I, I really vibe with her sense of practicality and her sense Man. of, you know, getting uh, getting four on the floor and, and getting to work and, and uh, you know, her, her, yeah, and, and you know, I I have an appreciation for like the large scale vision and and the passion that goes into creating artistic endeavors. But at the end of the day, I am definitely a uh, yeah a Sayaka type character. I'm very much like you know, as you can tell, just as I talk about our own little anime podcast, I am a very like 
you know, let's let's get a schedule, let's get a budget, let's iron out all the little nitty gritty details and <laughs> responsibilities and such so we know exactly what it is we're doing. You know, and that's that's part of why I you know, I was always that way in bands, is how I treat my record label as well. Um I've always been much more focused on, you know, practical yeah, the practical nuts and bolts and, and the more real world sense of, of defined goals rather than striking forth with uh, just just passion but no focus yeah i feel the same i always like like literally like this is me planning out my weekend like <laughs> i plan everything out and i make sure that like i have enough time and like i'm not like horsing around and doing it and i feel like i feel i feel like very much into her so much i'm just like wait a second i need to stop i need to figure out what i'm doing like i need someone to tell me to like stop watching anime and like get started on my work we need managers dan can be our manager i'll be the manager manager <laughs> danager so who's been who's midori then who's and who's the model who's the model girl was it Subasa or whatever? Oh, Subame. Yeah, she's cute. I yes. love how much she just like really like her backstory that they went into like two like two episodes ago before the big showcase. Um, like liter like brought me so much into her character because, um, you know she has been studying since she was like born. Every moment of every day, she's studying movement and like. Mm how things work and she studies it with like so much like i don't know what's the word passion i guess she's yeah. always learning and i feel like i need to learn something from her <laughs> <laughs> Because it, it is really interesting that that this you know Mr. Yuasa guy like this really does stand far away from the rest of his catalog in a way that's really interesting. Like everything else that he's done, you know, Iba uh, to uh, Double Man Crybaby, all of it has such a distinct animation style and and art style, and all of it has such a distinct mood to it as well like everything he does has this kind of like under undertone of, of I don't know like melancholy you know like half these shows you know Kaiba and Double Man Crybaby both practically end in the apocalypse and whoa he did cat soup could be. I, I didn't see that yeah whoa okay well, that explains a lot <laughs> cat soup's fucking bizarre yeah, it's so crazy. I mean, like, it is kind of I can I can see like his influence on Isaacin because it is kind of like, you know, taking reality to another level. Mm. I have not seen the the Tatami Galaxy yet. But I haven't seen a lot of his work actually. Tatami I, I yeah, Tatami Galaxy, Kaiba we all watched ping pong together. That ping was pong. Yeah. Yeah. What is yeah. The, have you guys seen yeah. Mind Game? No, seen, seen clips cover, of it. It looks real good. It looks like something I'm. Um, in anime's craziest deaths, they showed a clip from that. Um, this guy got shot in his asshole. Oh. They showed his death. Uh, that was AWO. Cool. Um, mm. Well, Daryl Surratt was. Were you, were you in that? Were you with me when you saw that, Dan? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Otakon. I feel like we were probably all there. We? I don't know. It all, all the conventions are like... They blur? Yeah, they really are. Uh, there was an anime's craziest death where Jeff and I were separated from you two. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Remember. So what's your favorite uh, you also work then? Yeah. Yeah, well, what's that's, your yeah that's a big question. Uh, <laughs> were you I, guess, I guess the correct answer is Kaiba. <laughs> 
Taiba is the show that I've had the most loyalty to over the years. I've seen it a ton of times. I oh yeah, I always keep coming back to it. I love the kind of overarching melancholy and and kind of subdued desperation of that show. I love the yeah, like the the kind of dystopian politics, but also mixed with this mysterious love story and and mysterious you know kind of nuanced character relationships um and it's a show that really you get it's a show that really rewards you for watching it over and over i think there's a lot to it that is lurking beneath the depths and i think it becomes much easier to track the more you see it because there's so much body swapping throughout that show and there's so much foreshadowing throughout that show. Uh, I can see how it could be confusing to watch on the first go, but after you've seen it two or three times, it you know starts to make a lot more sense and, and become a lot more uh, easily navigated. Uh, but all that being said, I mean, yeah, ping pong also really big for me. Uh, Have I you really... seen Ride Your Weight? No. That apparently came out last year, and it kind of looks like Isaacin. Yeah, that's just that was just in theaters. Oh, was it? Yeah, for and like we did two it days. Uh, oh, okay, I, for two days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Tatami Galaxy is definitely worth watching as well. I watched that in college, and and I thought that hit quite hard. Mm-hmm. And yeah, all you know, all of these shows are like very deep looks at the human experience and and you know these kind of deep emotional studies in Isoken is really not like that at all that's part of why i i think it's it's like really weird it's a it's a totally new branching off of of you what i would consider to be Uasa's kind of signature style mm. tatami galaxy ping pong kaiba and devil man crybaby all like fit together very very nicely they're all like thematically similar they're all stylistically similar they're all very different in content and different in genre but they feel very similar to each other when you're actually watching them and Isoken is unlike any of these other shows um, I, don't feel, maybe that... I feel like the only person that was not swooning over devil man crybaby not that i disliked it at all because I, I liked it just fine but i definitely had a feeling like Everybody, everybody that's heaping all this best of best anime ever praise on Devil Man Cry <laughs> really be giving it to Kaiba. Uh, yeah, I didn't really feel like it was like crazy good, but it also was like an interesting and entertaining. So like, like compared to something, you know, obviously like uh, a slice of life show, like Devil Man Cry Baby is going to be like more action packed and like better to look at than just like people going to school and doing whatever but i didn't really feel like it was like this crazy best of like have to watch kind of show like everybody was like ex- like explaining it mm-hmm. but uh, also it was good i think if <laughs> so, you if you've watched the um the ovas i guess where they're from the 90s mm-hmm. um maybe they're late 80s i can't remember but the uh that connection with that show and then wanting to watch the newer version, maybe you had to have a more of a connection with it. Um, um, we like uh, once at like when we had rope, we did a couple anime nights. Were you there for one of them, Jeffrey? Yeah, it's I feel like right. we watched um, we watched a co- like two episodes of Devil Man or yeah, yeah, Devil Man, like the old yeah. old old ass one. And mm. I mean, I kind of still like that one better. Better, yeah. Yeah. What did, what did you like about it better? Uh, just like the story, like, you know, how everything progressed in it, like the, obviously, like, it's, it's, the, it's the classic, like, new anime versus old anime, and old anime is always going to be classic and nostalgic, and new anime just doesn't have that yet, so, like, I like old anime, you know, it's like that kind of mentality where, like, it was... Right the first and it is good still i feel like it's just too short Hmm. yeah yeah i never saw the original uh just because i 
have not dug that deeply into that that kind of time and place of uh, gore oriented monster anime you know from from the late eighties early nineties or whatever um but yeah, I guess I understood that Devil Man Crybaby was was added a lot to the story that's not originally there, but I don't know exactly, uh, you know, how different it is. I mean, I think it stands. Uh, I think it stands on its own mm. as being something separate. I got a, I got a lot of strong feelings for for Crybaby. Okay. It made me cry. It just made me cry a lot. What really? Nope. Really? <laughs> really? I mean, uh, I think I should a tear. I'll say that. Oh, wow. Uh, no, who's the crybaby? <laughs> oh, no, who's the Jeff with the crybaby? <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you have to go and destroy Jeff the Man. earth? <laughs> Jeff with man crybaby. <laughs> Jeff with <Jeff Man. laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that. I mean, I really like the rave scenes. The rave scenes are really cool when everybody was like uh, transforming into monsters. Yeah, the rave scenes are definitely really cool. But that's also something that I very much like is monsters. So <laughs> fit very well with my theme. I liked when when there was a giant apocalypse and everybody died. Oh I, yeah. I, I like these kind of apocalyptic moments in anime in general. You know, whether it's Devil Man Crybaby or Kaiba or like Wolf's Rain or Techno Lies. You know, anything that deals with the end of existence. Um, I vibe with that. I like that. Uh, animes that are about like a very like catastrophic event that happen mm. that bring about the apocalypse or something else like uh, Terror in Tokyo. If you've seen that. Or um, there's this new anime that came out last year. It was a, a Netflix, like, fully 3D animated movie uh, mm. called Revisions. And that was kind of like a mech, yeah. mech show. Like, oh, yeah. man. Yes. Afia and Justin were, were recommending that to me. And we watched an episode together. And I thought that looked pretty good. I'm, I'm, it's on my long list of things to watch at some point. Yeah. Oh, like, man. I, I enjoyed it. Mm. But I'm not I'm not one to like discredit 3D animation. Like I will I accept anything as as it is supposed to be seen like however they want it to. Sometimes I don't like it, but you know, um I'm not going to not watch something cuz it's 3D. Right. Mm. Mouth yeah, is it's... terrible 3D then yeah, like Well, it's come case on. case by case basis, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, cuz you know, when I when I think of terrible 3D I mean, terrible 3D can mean a lot of things. I think Netflix has a history of terrible 3D shows, like Knights of Sidonia, which, I, in my eyes, inarguably looks bad. But I'm, I told, I'm, I like that show, and I don't mind the art style. Like, I am, I'm willing to accept these like clunky, awful looking shows because, I guess, because the character designs are still appealing, even if. Mm. The, I think that must be the big clinching point to me that, you yeah, know, the character designs are still, appealing, even if the overall art style is a bit awkward and the animation is a bit awkward, you know, I still like, you know, resonate with these characters as individuals because they look appealing to me. I think of that differently than the ghost in the shell Netflix show that, that has the trailers out where like arguably the animation is better and the general sense of art style is arguably better, but the character designs <laughs> are so grossly unacceptable that I, I I will not acknowledge that that I will not acknowledge it. Fuck that stupid show. I mean, <laughs> reboot. It's reboot. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, how did you feel about Berserk? That animation. Same. Well. Yeah. yeah, what about Berserk? Well, I mean, that is a good point. I mean, everyone said that it was terrible, but I I, I watched, like, the first two episodes of, like, the new Berserk, and, like, yeah, it wasn't great, but I feel like, and maybe because I, like, haven't watched the original or anything, but I feel like it wasn't, like, that bad. But I can see where people would, like, connect with characters in a specific way. Um, and then, like, them being changed in the future being, like, kind of sucky. Yeah. 
I definitely, I definitely, well, it's, it's a different kind of feeling because I already know the story and mm -hmm. I know all these characters and this is, you know, a franchise that I am really emotionally attached to and characters that I'm really emotionally attached to. So there is a degree of joy that I get just from watching the, you know, these people I care about doing, you know, these exciting things and going through the story that I really like so much. Uh, it is true that the animation is pretty unacceptably awful and more than just the animation. Yeah. Like, you know, the character designs are certainly a poor judgment call that like sound design is really bad. I mean, there's, you know, bajillions of videos all over the internet that are just tearing this thing to shreds. And I've watched every single one of them. <laughs> you know, I, I agree with them. You know, I, I see what they're talking about. I see it too. Um, See, so, yeah, I I watched all that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, one time through, just because you know films. The films I didn't think were so bad. Yeah, uh, and I guess from an animation and, and art standpoint, I thought the films were fine. I still prefer the original aesthetic, but I thought the films were were totally reasonable. Mm. And certainly quite like categorically different than than the TV show. If anything, I thought the film suffered just from, I don't know, that just because Berserk is, is, I guess, not a story that is told as well in a film format. You know, like so much of Berserk and, and kind of the emotional nuance and poignancy of Berserk hinges on space, I think, in, and hinges on kind of the space between characters and the space between events and having these sorts of kind of quiet, reflective moments that are easy to weave into a TV show, but much more difficult to effectively communicate in film. You know, when you're watching the Berserk movies, I feel like, you know, you've created a, a laundry list of plot points and you just move right down the list. You're like, all right, this yeah. happens, and then that happens, and then this happens. Uh, and it, it's kind of all plot and no ambiance. And Berserk is a show that is a story that really has both and i think the original um, adaptation the original anime adaptation does a very good job of of giving you both and yeah, the, it the, the anime gives you neither really but it's yeah. <laughs> they tried i don't think they tried <laughs> <laughs> yeah the story is there at least but yeah yeah um, i don't know i've never seen uh, I actually haven't seen any of Berserk ever. Well, I know what we're doing a deep dive. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do a deep dive of Berserk, and we need to do a deep dive of Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal yeah. Alchemist. Yeah, because I haven't seen either of them. And Dan argues that the new one is better. No, the old uh, one. The old one. Okay, the old the one is only better. The one that thinks the old one is better. You are, you are the unpopular opinion. Yeah. Uh, it's been years, I, so I couldn't I couldn't give you an honest <laughs> wait which one I thought was better. I liked I liked the the length of the original. It was like straight to the point. I think we should rewatch this. Yeah. All right. <laughs> this is this is a topic I've been I've been wanting to state my case for the original. I know to, to anybody that'll listen for a long time. That should maybe that should be our first deep dive. Yeah. I'm literally, I mean, like, next, because of this dang coronavirus, um, you know, ReZero is delayed. So there's one less anime that I'm watching next season. Word. Hmm. All right, yeah, is, is Baltimore still under a state of emergency? Yes. Actually, I have no idea. Um, Do you, are you still going to work, Amelia? Oh, yeah. Um, because, uh, you know, businesses that are, are essential to life um, are to remain open. I and realize. essential is Starbucks. <laughs> Apparently. Word. <laughs> now, Starbucks only closes on, uh, on uh, some of them close on Christmas and then or, and or like extreme inclement weather. So like if you get snowed in with five feet of snow and nobody can come in, but otherwise like you're finding a way in. Word. <laughs> Jeff, are you going to work? Yeah, I have to go to work. Yeah, I do. Work. 
I can't wait for yours. Your place isn't like 250 people or more. No, no, but Kara, she'll be home for the next two weeks, I think. Hell yeah. That's nice. Yeah, yeah there's liter there's like not, not too much new anime coming out next season, like at all. Hmm. The and a thing- lot of it is second seasons. Okay. Is, is Kara on, on salary? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So she's good. Okay. Word. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but she has to work from home regardless. But nobody really works from home. Yeah. So as a guy works from home. <laughs> okay, so what what exactly is coming out next season, Amelia? Okay. So the things that I'm excited for are Kaguya Sama Love is War season two. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I am caught up in the manga, so I already know what's happening, but I just need it to be in anime form. Like mm-hmm. I need it. Um, I just recently like binged all of my teen romantic comedy Snafu because I saw that there was a third season coming out, and it's always been one that I've like tried to watch, and I was like, you know, I would watch the first episode and get like halfway through and then like completely die of boredom. But then, like, um, but then I like powered through it, and I got through the the, the boring part, in the boring first episode, and uh, binged the whole. So that their third season's coming out. Um, uh, like the new Sword Art Online, um, part two, Fruits Basket season two, Food Wars the fifth plate, um, like Ascendant of a Bookworm part two. There's like a lot of that. No Guns Life too. Um, then like, do you guys remember Otakon? I guess it was this past year. Um, Trigger announced that like uh, anthropomorphic animal anime called B- BNA. Yeah. That that's yeah. coming out, and I'm interested in that um, because they are because we saw it at Otakon and. Um, it's a new trigger anime, so I'm going to watch it. But um, I think it is coming out on Netflix, so I don't think it'll actually be like able to be seen for like us Beast. until next, next until like summer season. If like Beast that. Wars. Right. Yeah. What did you think of, of my teen snafu? Um, what was it called again? <laughs> my, um, I, the, my, my teen romantic, romantic comedy snafu um or uh, the the american or english like title is um my teen romantic comedy is not as i expected or something like that <laughs> it's really long it's, yeah. a, it's just like a, it's a mouthful um, it's like a slice of life um anime about like a club a specific club at a school that's called the service club and what they do is like um if someone needs help doing something they will help them do whatever the thing is that they ask um and it's like there's no conditions for your thing to be like approved or unapproved it's just like if they feel like doing it and it's like two um two characters who are very socially awkward and so it's like they're them trying to be un- not socially awkward anymore by being in the club and this one teacher is specifically like um rooting for them and she'll come in and check on them and she'll give them like people that need help doing something so that they can you know work as a team and come together and make friends and like be a functioning member of society um and uh, they, so yeah, it's just, it's just like, you know, and then there's some kind of like a uh, love triangle happening that um, slowly over time comes into play. It's not about that in the beginning, but like, as these characters progress in their relationships with each other, they, um, they form bonds between each other that could potentially be broken in the next season. It's definitely an anime I would like. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I love triangles. Yeah. You know, that uh, reality TV life. <laughs> yeah, what are the top anime love triangles? There's a list. 
Oh, uh, Naruto. Team 7. Uh, yeah, Damn, I guess that, right? is, that is... Yeah, that is... I laid it on thick. Love triangle. <laughs> uh, I guess Macross? Macross love triangle? Oh, I've never seen Macross. Well... I don't, maybe I'm confusing my sense of of triangle. <laughs> <laughs> like love squares. Well, no, because like oh, well, shit, the, um, uh, zero two Ichigo. Um, what is his name? Hero. Yeah. So love triangle just needs to be like, like that. It doesn't need to be like both both of these, right? <laughs> like if it's two two people pining for the same person, yeah, yeah that's it. Macross, Macross fits yeah. that nicely, and that's a good yeah. one. Um, Naruto, Darling in the Frame. Nana. Nana with with the um, <laughs> the guy from Black Stones and the guy from Trap Nest. Oh, do they both? Because they both love Nana. Yeah. Oh, I love that one. Yeah, that's a pretty yeah. juicy one. That's yeah. a juicy one. Because then Nana gets pregnant and they're all like, Well, who's the dad? And the trap nest guy is like, I'll step up and be the father regardless of you know, <laughs> it's actually the the dad, you know, I will claim this child and then the other guy is like, I'm a fucking wimp. I won't <laughs> you know, I just wanna run away and everybody talks shit to him and is mean to him. But uh it's juicy, yeah. I'm like, damn, that's a rare steak right there. That's some juicy shit. Oh, fucking Peach Girl. Did y'all see Peach Girl? Did not watch Peach, Peach Girl. Girl. Oh, man. Now that is some reality TV drama. It's literally just a love triangle. Right. And it's every every day it's it's uh, Momo like liking the person that's wrong for her and then the person who is right for her like staying by her side and sticking up for her. Mm. That one's so juicy. If you could watch that, it's so. I mean, maybe it's not an easy watch for you guys, but it was such an easy watch for me. Like I, I could watch all of Peach Girls in like one day. Well, you know, you know what else has some great uh, real world love triangle to it? School days. Oh. <laughs> School days, yes. That might actually be the penultimate. In a different way, that is the penultimate anime love triangle. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. I hate how much everyone hates school days. Do people like, hate it? People hate it. I mean, like, if you if you were to look it up on YouTube, most people are like, oh, this fucking sucks. This is, like, the dumbest thing. Like, oh, of course, it's predictable. Um, uh, these people can't appreciate the finer things in life, man. That's what I feel <laughs> like. You know, like not everything has to be great. Sometimes it's, it's cool to just, you know, be be bad and what? embrace the badness. You know, you got to embrace the scum, embrace the the bullshit. You know, right. like yeah, it's I one thing. That. If you... That's a, that's my spiritual anime energy is yeah. embracing the trash. Yeah, like if you if you try to be great and fail, then I... That's bad, but if you try to be bad and succeed, that's actually quite good in my opinion. Yes, yeah, exactly. That's pretty great. <laughs> Wait, is this a show where the boyfriend wants to kill the girl? Kills him. Or the girl kills a guy. Is yeah. it one way or the other? The girl. Yeah, the girl. He's a total shithead. <laughs> he gets killed. He's a total shithead. <laughs> yeah, he becomes one. like a weird sex addict and starts yeah, sleeping with okay. every character. Well, the yeah. first, like, two episodes, you're like, oh, it's just, like, you know, he's, like, a normal main character. Like, he's probably an asshole, but, like, whatever. But then, like, he progressively gets worse and worse where you're like, oh, my God, I want to kill him. <laughs> and then someone does it for you. Yeah, then in Whoa. the end, the, uh, yeah, the girl, one of the girls that just, just like, goes batshit crazy and, and kind of shuts down psychologically because she can't handle being rejected by this guy then she snaps and kills him and kills the other girl that he is officially in a relationship with although he's like constantly sleeping around and cheating on her and she but, knows it and yeah, she knows it she knows it and yeah the uh the losing her mind girl kills her 
And then this is the part they censored, apparently. She, like, opens up her pregnant stomach, and they you, like, have a shot where you see, you're, like, from the fetus's eyes, you see her standing <laughs> over this, like, giant open wound in this pregnant girl's stomach. Uh, but oh boy. That was, that was apparently... Censored in the anime with um, it panning out the window at a boat scene. Yeah, actually, the uh, the drummer the drummer of Naval saw the boat. The he saw the boat broadcast. I was I was very impressed. I was mm -hmm. like, "You're fucking that's that's a little piece of anime history right there." Yeah, it is. Huh. So it was banned. Yeah. The last episode, rather than showing the last episode, they showed a thirty minute still shot of a boat. Uh, I think I thought that was the story. Uh, Okay. That began I, the nice boat meme. I feel like I watched literally the last two episodes uh, at Otakon. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. Did you I, see the, the, the leading up two episodes before that? Yeah, you just I saw think so. I just remember being like, what the, what is going on? Yeah, what? I mean, to be <laughs> fair, I, I can get it. one like the endings of things but that like literally through the ringer those last two episodes i was like what the fuck is happening oh my god i thought this was just a nice like love triangle anime yeah but i i loved it the whole way through i, I was riding for him you know by the time he became a full-blown sex addict i was like damn dude this shit's hot man <laughs> Yo, know, my juice is flowing, man. This oh my god, dude. He, he, how many, I feel like he slept with like four girls at the school festival. Yeah. Ah. Oh. I player. I need an actual account of that, but I'm pretty sure he slept with four. Or at least tried to sleep with four. Did you yeah. ever watch uh, Please Teacher? I didn't watch it. I have that. We have that, actually. Okay. I, I feel like there is some similar uh, love triangle relationships going on, but it was with a student and their teacher. Hot. Like Dawson's <laughs> Creek. And like what, about, uh, what about Scum's Wish? Yeah, the Scum's Wish was just floating around my mind, too. That's also... Uh, Scum's Wish, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. I actually don't think Scum's Wish is trashy, really. Or like, oh, absolutely you know, not. I will argue I guess, anyone who calls it trashy. Are well, you joking? It's I guess got a lot of meaning. Yeah, I, I think so too. And I think if you like, if we th if we're thinking trashy, like oh, everybody's just sleeping around and getting all caught up in their feels, then oh, sure, yeah. surface level is trashy. But actually, I thought Scum's Wish was a, a very emotionally gripping show, and and really had a lot to say about the nature of relationships and yeah, the. Uh, I don't know the power of lust versus the power of love. You know stuff like the um, when when the main character's friend is uh, kind of pressures her to sleep with her, and uh, it's kind of like I know that she doesn't actually want to sleep with me, but I don't really care because I feel like I really need this emotionally. I'm like, damn, dude, that that's quite bleak, and mm -hmm. is surely something. You know that everybody most likely everybody does at some point you know in their weaker moments or in their you know immature moments and yeah it's like it's a very dark but a very real way of looking about sex and relationships mm -hmm. yeah and anime doesn't they they t tend to uh in anime shows you know they tend to um shy around the bush a little bit they don't they don't just get to it you know what I mean? it's like oh well maybe we'll get together they won't, you know. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll kiss, but yeah. not for like twenty episodes. But this is just like straight to the point. Um, yeah. yeah, and yeah. I want to, I want to draw a differentiation between that versus domestic girlfriend as we think about shows that are like trying to explore complex relationships or or complex sexuality. Because domestic girlfriend, I think tries to pivot itself in a way where it's kind of it has a foot in both worlds, where it's at once kind of trashy and preposterous, but also is like trying to be more nuanced in how it, uh, you know, how these characters grapple with their, you know, kind of trashy relationships, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think Scum's Wish, uh, 
I think I think domestic girlfriend kind of fails in this, or rather, like the the uh, layers of nuance that are attempted in domestic girlfriend kind of just just wash right over me or like mm -hmm. I, it doesn't resonate with me at all to watch this guy trying to grapple with his emotions for these women because i'm just like the whole premise is just kind of stupid so I, I don't really buy his his nuanced feelings uh and versus scum's wish i felt like I saw a little bit of myself in each of these characters and as they grappled with their own emotional shortcomings, it made me feel like, uh, you know, I too have been this person at different points in my life. And I too have been this person at other points in my life. And, you know, these are also things that I have struggled with. And it, I think that's why it didn't seem trashy to me at all. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, I think it was one of my favorite shows from, when did it come out? Like three years ago? Maybe. Could be. I'd, I'd marathon the entire show in one day. <laughs> it's quick. For a friend, yeah. I, I couldn't, so quick. couldn't put it down. You know, some shows are just easy. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening to our first episode. We are still working out our current recording setup and hope our audio production improves over time. But in our next episode, we will be continuing our discussion on Masaki Yuasa, a sort of companion piece to this episode. I would like to thank Francis Dempster for providing the theme song. And you can find us at ohcpodcast.squarespace.com.